Well, it finally happened after 175 episodes consistently week after week. The streak has ended. I missed Tuesday's release date. I'm going to tell you what happened right after these messages. And that if I screwed up, I would be put on a final warning. And I proceeded to be late for a pretty important event. And my charm was not getting me through. (laughs) So I got called in and basically I was told I could put in my notice and leave on my own terms or they would watch me until it was until they fired me, basically. ADHD Rewired, episode 175. This is the show designed for those of us with really good intentions, but a slightly wandering attention. My name is Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, coach, and speaker. The website is ADHDrewired.com. We know that starting is the hardest part, so let's get started. But first, let me tell you about this. If you're listening to this the week it came out and you're in the States, I hope you're having a really nice 4th of July holiday. I'm taking this week off. I'm going to be spending time with my family, unpacking boxes, getting settled in our new home, and I'll be hunting for a new office space. Next week on Tuesday, July 11th, we'll be having our monthly live Q&A. Then in two weeks on Monday, July 17th and Tuesday, July 18th, we're going to be kicking off registration for the 10th season of the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group with two days of interactive planning workshops. On Monday, July 17th, join us for planning your year, month, and quarter. Then on Tuesday, the 18th, we'll be planning our month, week, and day. This is not a passive webinar. These are interactive workshops that will guide you through the planning process. Both sessions start at 12.30 p.m. Central. You can register at erictivers.com slash events, but space is limited. Then beginning on Wednesday, July 19th and going through Tuesday, July 25th, registration interviews for our 10th season of coaching and accountability groups will be taking place. You don't have to wait until then to schedule your registration interview. In fact, I would encourage you to schedule your registration call now because we only have 16 spots left to see section dates, times, availability, and to schedule your registration interview, go to coachingrewired.com. That's coachingrewired.com. Now, let's get on with the interview. Hey, everybody. So I am recording this on July 7th. That's Friday at about 3 o'clock, 3.20. At, uh, and the sound seems a little bit different to you. I'm actually recording this here at the Northbrook Public Library because um, I wasn't going to drive out to my office. Now, something happened this week, as you may have noticed, that has not uh, – not happened since I started the podcast. I missed a week. I missed my release date. Reason being, the file that I uploaded to uh, to get to my podcasting uh, editing team um, was the wrong one. Totally my fault. Um, but here's what, and I share this in the Facebook community. Um, I actually look at as somewhat of a win that I was okay with that. I did not kind of freak out over it. I know in the, and on the 4th of July, which is when it, it should have been released. Um, in the past, I probably would have, whatever I was doing with my family would have, uh, said, you know what, I got to go into the office and, and take care of that. But I didn't, I, I didn't even freak out. Now, I don't know if that's because we're, we're still sort of in the thick of the move. We just moved last week. Uh, it's been, it'll be two weeks, I guess, on Saturday. Um, and, I, you know, I still feel very uh, sort of unsettled and, um, 
you know, when they say that moving is one of the most stressful things you can go through, whoever they are, they is, they are, um, whoever it is, they are right. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been really tough. Um, uh, but I think that when I look at, um, you know, my, my challenges with perfectionism and my, uh, the battles that I've worked through with really becoming a perfectionist in recovery, um, I have to say that we've made some really good progress, uh, in this area. Um, and so, this episode, I'm recording this on Friday. I don't even know when this is going to be released. This was supposed to be last Tuesday's episode. So the next maybe week or two, there may be some weird release dates um, because I have uh, two really awesome interviews that I want to share with you. Um, both interviews are uh, from different members of my most recent coaching group and just really, really uh, uh, great stories that they are sharing with you, um, I think, so much of what I, what my guests are going to be sharing are, is really, really relatable. So I just wanted to give you a quick heads up where, um, so I, I just got internet uh, at home, but I'm actually at the library, so the sound is different, uh, to say the least. Um, I am... Uh, I stopped here. I was looking at office spaces. Um, haven't found anything yet, but I have in a couple hours. I'm going to be checking out a, uh, an office space with another therapist, um, which would be preferable because that would be much more affordable. Um, so that's just what's going on in, in our life. Um, I learned some plumbing recently. Um, let's see. After a day... Uh, in the home, we had one cycle of hot water, and then that was it. And uh, plumber had to come out for we had a problem with our hot water heater. That was uh, I don't know. That was four hundred dollars that put us back right off the bat. Um, and then uh, just yesterday, uh, our disposal kitchen sink uh, was all getting backed up, and so and I for the first time, uh, you know, thanks to YouTube, man. I can you can really DIY stuff on YouTube, but so I attempted to snake the uh, my clogged pipe, um, and I think I did it correctly, but it didn't work. And then um, I did some plunging of the sink. I may possibly have made the problem worse. Um, needless to say, we they uh, I had to bring out another plumber um, while they were fixing it, and uh, they brought on one of these like huge industrial snakers and. Uh, they got a clog out that was twice the length of what my snake was. Um, so, but watching him uh, do that, at least I knew I was doing it correctly. Mine just wasn't long enough. Um, but then when they were uh, working on it, there was water leaking from the uh, uh, from the disposal, leaking into the electric. Um, so, you know, it's we in this new house that we are in, it's not a new house at all. There's a lot of stuff that we have to do to it. Um, I'm not the most handy person, but I'm trying to learn uh, some of these things. But we are uh, but we're taking care of it. Um, man, Angie's List is amazing. I don't know if you've ever used Angie's List. I'm not sponsored by Angie's List, although my cousin that she does work for them um so uh, yeah that's getting reviews for servicemen because you know things like it is like it's real adulting things like we had a gas leak in our on in the we had a, there's a gas grill that was attached uh, uh concreted into the patio and i was sitting out back and smelling gas and uh um you know that's probably not a good thing and i um, embarrassed to say that I actually smelled it during our inspection and I actually completely forgot about it. And I was sitting out there the other day and I smelled it again. And so they got someone out, turned it off. Um, but all of these things, um, you know, it's until these are all things that are, are taken care of. It is very unsettling. Um, it really does impact uh, the ADHD. I know that all these things in time will be uh, taken care of with time and and a lot of money, um, but we got a good contractor that we're working with. So anyways, I just wanted to give you the heads up or the give you an update on what is uh, going on with me. I will give you guys updates. Um, I think we got a couple new patrons um, over at patreon.com slash ADHD rewired. Um, so thank you because all of your support right now is going to be really, really helpful. Um, all right. So now let's get on with the scheduled interview that was supposed to be out on July 4th and it is out today, whatever day it actually is. So uh, thanks so much and I'll uh, give you guys an update next time I get in front of a mic. Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. 
My guest today is Kat Hoyer. Kat is a certified life and career coach. She is the founder of Compose Coaching, which offers personal and professional development workshops, retreats, as well as individual life and career coaching. After spending over 15 years in corporate America, Kat found herself at a personal and professional crossroads. Through a series of unexpected detours, she found her way to the driver's seat and developed a CBT-based coaching model to help her clients steer their life, that's in quotes, to be the driver for their own success. Kat, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So Kat has been a member of uh, our most recent coaching group, what we call ARC9, the ninth season of the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group. And um, so I just wanted to, to invite you on to share sort of your story, your experiences in the coaching group and, uh, you know, to talk ADHD. Sounds good. So let's first start by uh, defining that acronym of a uh, to steer their life. Tell me what that is and sort of how, how you developed that. So steer your life is a coach, a coaching model that I use with my clients so that they can kind of coach themselves. They really learn how to use this model to steer their life. Um, so the, the acronym, what it stands for um, is the, the S stands for situation. Um, the T stands for thought. The first E stands for emotion The second E stands for execution and result. So we basically take any situation that they're dealing with and figure out how they're thinking about it, what emotions they're having, what results they're getting, and just figure out how they can steer it in a different direction. And it works with any situation that that I've come across. Okay. And I was going to say, I could probably read the letter in Patreon. I don't mind doing that for the, the one that we talked about at the beginning. Okay. Okay. So I'm all um, right with that. All right. So, uh, there was a letter that, that, uh, um, you shared a thing before we hit record that you, uh, wrote, why don't you you set it up and then we'll, uh, um, sort of explain what that is. And then for, for, uh, people who support on Patreon can hear it's pretty intense, but yeah, why don't you tell a little bit about what it is? So, um, I'm, I'm really familiar with um, AA. Um, I have, I'm actually an Al Anon member. I have people in my life that are um, either in recovery or active in their. And just in case people don't know what Al Anon is, will you just quickly state what that is? Sure. Um, Al Anon is. Um, is a branch of AA to support people who um, are in potentially codependent relationships with someone who is dealing with or has dealt with an addiction. Okay. Um, so. Um, in AA and Al-Anon, one of the things they have you do is, um, list resentments, um, that you may have with someone and, you know, you can talk to them about it. And I, so anyway, I actually went through, um, and did some resentments really from an ADHD standpoint with some people in my life who, and honestly, to no fault of their own, I will say, didn't know that I had ADHD because I didn't either, Mm -hmm. but really used a lot of the, um, the ways that the eighty eight the ADHD issues that I had really used them against me. Mm. Um, and I, I used them against me too, you know, so, but I needed to, I had found myself in some of the assignments that we were doing in the class. I had found myself in the coaching here, group. In the coaching group. Mm. Um, I, I had heard some of those criticisms kind of coming back to haunt me. So I wanted to release it. So a way to release it was writing that the resentments letter. Okay. Um, and you're going to share that because I think it's, uh, uh, there's, I think there was like three F bombs in the first sentence. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so, uh, definitely. Sorry, mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not to my mom. It's not a letter to my mom. <laughs> uh, so you'll, you'll share that letter, um, at the end. Okay. So, um, how did you discover you had ADHD? Uh, well, I actually was in a therapy session and, I had at the time that I was going through these series of unexpected changes in my life. um, One of the things that happened was I I was actually suicidal. Mm. Um, I had gotten in a fight with my ex and I was driving around these really hilly roads. And I thought to myself, I can just um, do everyone a favor and drive off and make it look like an accident. And I realized like how serious those thoughts were. Um, 
meaning I, I really felt that I was going to do that. I was mm. trying to plan on how to scary. do that. Very scary. So I, I reached out because at the time I felt like a failure at everything. I felt like, you know, a failure as a wife, a failure as an employee, daughter, sister, all these mm. things. But I knew that I was a pretty good mom. So that was the one thing I knew that I needed to reach out um, to get some help. So I started therapy. And as we were going through the therapy sessions, um, I was explaining some of the issues that I have with trying to relax, um, trying to just, you know, chill out. And when I was actually comparing myself to my dad at the time, and I was talking about how, um, how my dad, what my dad's work ethic is like. And she said, there's no very passing comment. She said, there's no way he can do all these things that you're saying unless he has ADHD. And I was like, well, you know what? Mm. That's just for kids. The adults don't have that. So I got home and then I was like, don't tell me my dad doesn't work like that because he does. So I got home and I looked up all the things about ADHD. And I think there was a list of 100 different things. And I checked yes to 99 of them. And then I just, you know, started reaching out for help. I essentially got diagnosed twice because I didn't believe it the first so, time. So you first <laughs> went and looked about your dad and then you saw it in yourself? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting because it's often the other way around. You check right. your kid and then you see it in yourself. Right. Hmm. And so, and how old were you? So how long ago was this? Um, this was seven years ago. Okay. Okay. So, and um, I know you just celebrated a birthday. I don't, I don't know I which did. one, uh, but... Happy birthday. Oh, thanks. <laughs> like, we don't need to go there. <laughs> we don't need to. <laughs> we'll leave it a mystery. I think Facebook says it. I don't know. <laughs> thanks a lot, Facebook. All right. <laughs> so seven years ago, you, you discovered that, like, oh, this ADHD thing, this this sounds like me. Mm -hmm. Then what? Um, I first went to... Um, there was a, a center here called the brain train center mm -hmm. and they, they would do evaluations there. And I got evaluated. She read the results back to me and said, you know, it definitely looks like you have ADHD. And I thought they were just telling me that to sell me their services. So I convinced myself that I didn't, but then I was still having so many issues and it, it got worse. The more stressed I was going through the divorce and the job changes, things just kept getting worse and worse. And I talked to my doctor about it. She did put me on Adderall. We never really got the dosage right. Hmm. So I'm currently not medicated. Um, and I, th I, the sort of interesting thing is when I, the, the medication wasn't right and I was doing all kinds of research and I think I knew more about it than my doctor did. That's not uncommon. Right. And uh, so the really frustrating thing is I, the first, I, I set up a, an appointment to have this discussion with her to say that I just don't think this is working. We either need to try different meds or a different dose or something. The first appointment, I completely forgot. The second appointment, um, I had one more thing, itis, and I was more than 15 minutes late. So they, I, I was like probably 17 minutes late, so they wouldn't see me. The third appointment, I was so excited. I got there on time. I signed the name or signed my name and I went over to sit down in the waiting room because I got, you know, I was like having this mini celebration and they called me up to the desk and said, you're at the wrong location. I have done that exact thing. Yeah. So I got kicked out of the practice because I was late Aww. more than three times. That like hurts my heart hearing that. Yeah. So that's why I'm like not on medication. I am trying, you know, I've done it. How long ago was that? That was 2013, so four years ago. So has it like been on your list to like, I don't think I realized this, this part of the story. Yeah. Uh, has it been on your list to, to do that? Um, it, it is. I mean, I, I really, at the same time, I got, um, I really got into mindfulness and meditation and that helped a lot. Mm. But I really, um, as my business has picked up, um, as I've hit, different stressors in my life, I've realized that medication. So it was not on my list until we started the class, really. Okay. Okay. So, um, you know, you still have, so today is, uh, we're recording this on, uh, on Tuesday, uh, June 27th. Oh, it's my mom's birthday today. I have to remember to call her mom. <gasps> Cause I, for, I forgot, really? I've forgotten twice, like in my life to, and it still hasn't. Yeah. Um, did I ever tell you the story? I don't know if I ever told the story about how I, the first time I forgot my mom's birthday, I was in college and I was calling her on my way to work just to say hello. Uh, Cause I was never really good at calling my mom. I said, I still am not good at calling my mom. And, um, 
so having the conversation and then as I'm getting pulling into work, she's like, well, is there anything else? I'm like, no. She's like, oh. They're like, well, you know, today's my birthday. And I'm just like, oh, happy birthday. And I think I did, yeah. I did, I'm pretty sure I did that exact thing the following year. So call yeah. mom. <laughs> Put that right beside the Patreon letter That's thing. Right. Yeah. That is right. Yeah. I'm glad that came up. <laughs> yeah, so it's June 27th. What so it's uh Tuesday. We have two more sessions at the coaching group. So you could actually have a a scheduled appointment with a psychiatrist before the group is over. What do you think? I could. could. I well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I could. Is that something you want to do? Um I want to, I guess if I don't, if I don't put it on the list of something to do, um, it just will keep continue to go to the bottom. So do you know who you, um, who you would call? I don't know who I would call. Okay, so what would be your first step to look up? Well, actually to probably call in, there's someone in our area that's an ADHD coach. Mm -hmm. I would probably call her first. Do you have her number? I do. Okay. And do you know where that number is? I think I think it's right back there. Yes, I think so. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure. If it's right back there. Do you want to just grab it real quick? Yeah, if I don't pull things over. <gasps> Look, it is. It really is right there. Awesome. Okay. So um, you'll you'll do that. And what we could probably do is um, when you get that done, you can uh, we can do a really quick follow-up recording to let me know that you, you've done that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, bringing in the okay. heat with some real accountability. Oh, <laughs> Major man. Major accountability. Whew, okay. You know, it's, it's one of these things that, that happens so often, um, especially with medication, because there's, you know, there's these hurdles that we, that we have to sort of jump over. And once you jump over them, it's so often that, that someone will say, man, I wish I didn't wait so long. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, um, I know you said that the, the Adderall that you were on before just it didn't work in the, the dose right. Or Yeah. Yeah. I just think the dosage wasn't right. Okay. Okay. When medication is working well, it's such a game changer. Mm -hmm. I accidentally took a double dose one time because I forgot that I had taken it and I saw a big difference. Yeah. So I think I was, my dosage was too low, I think. And interestingly, it's most, um, you know, people think it's overprescribed and over medicated. And actually like most doctors actually under prescribe under dose because they're like afraid of giving too much. And it's mm -hmm. each person is unique and each person is different. And so, um, I mean, there's plenty of people who need a dose that's even higher than what the FDA approves for. And that's okay to do. Um, but doctors that don't really know how to prescribe it are very afraid to do that. Right. And I, I actually worked at a place that had a, a internal pharmacy. So I had talked to the pharmacist when I realized that I had taken the double dose and he just kind of chuckled and said, you know what, it's going to be a really, there's like, there were shooting a bunch of shooting stars that night. And he's like, you're going to have the best night ever. <laughs> <laughs> he just like totally, it's like, you'll so be got fine. Anything you'll be putting fine. Off that worry. you really want to get done today would be a good day to do it. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So you got the diagnosis, you've pursued medication, you're kicked out of the practice because you were, you were late, you were uh, at, the, at the wrong office, you know, just the whole ADHD, like train wreck kind of situation mm -hmm. that we can, mm -hmm. so many of us can relate to. I, uh, I think the last time I did something like that, I was on time, but on the wrong day. I was a day early. Oh, yeah. 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 All right. And then, so you started your coaching practice. When, when, when did that happen? Well, that's when I mentioned I lost three jobs in three years. After the third one, I decided to start my own career coaching business at that point um, because I'd been in HR and recruiting for years. Um, I knew that well, but I knew that I wanted to eventually go into life coaching. Mm -hmm. um, I knew that I had to kind of get my life in a better place. But um, so it was actually last year that I was certified as a life coach. Okay. Well, congratulations on that. Tell, tell us about the, um, the final days of your last job. Uh, final days of my last job. Some of it, I think I've, I have PTSD about it. Like truly, mm. I don't remember a lot of it, but during really during that um, period of time, um, I have a therapist friend of mine that we've talked about the fact that I, there's potentially um, some PTSD just because of the way I remember or don't remember mm. a lot of it. But what I do remember was, I had, I had issues being on time and I was told that 
if I wasn't officially put on a final warning, um, but you were I in was, HR. I was in HR, but I hadn't, I still had. So um, there was a VP of HR okay. and she let me know they're going to be watching me and that if I screwed up, I would um, be put on a final warning. And I proceeded to be late for a pretty important event. And my charm was not getting me through. <laughs> so um, I got called in and basically I was told if I, I could put in my notice and leave on my own terms or um, they would watch me until it was until they fired me. basically. So that, like, it, would, it won't take long. I, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I was already just incredibly nervous mm -hmm. knowing that they were watching me. Which, so, and that just makes ADHD so much worse when you're mm -hmm. like having to, to, to fight so hard against like your own tendencies. Mm -hmm. That's right. what you were saying in, in a group, like how lucky I feel that I get to, you know, mm -hmm. you know, have ADHD working with, with, you know, ADHD. Cause it's like, I don't have to pretend to be normal. Right. Right. And you know, that's another thing I know we've, you've talked sometimes on the podcast about disclosing and mm -hmm. um, I did disclose it toward the end because I, I knew I was on my way out the, the door. The writing was on the wall. Yes. It, but I didn't do it to, to look for accommodations. I just, cause I knew that, that just really being on time, that's something that even though you have ADHD, ADHD you still have to be on time. Right. You still have that's to right. finish projects. You that's still right. have to, so, you know, reasonable accommodations, don't include some of the ways that 80, you know, some of the issues that we have with ADHD. And I understand that. I, I really do from a, from an HR standpoint. So you started your own practice. Mm -hmm. What was that process like? So you, how long have you been doing that again? For three, for three years, okay. I guess almost four years now. Okay. And so you've been doing it for about three years. And um, what was it that made you, um, want to uh join the, the coaching group um well about well exactly a year ago actually on on june 24th um i was in i was in a car accident and totaled my car mm. and f a few days later started dealing with some issues with pain i was stressed out i didn't have a car i was driving i have i drive a, a little bitty car and i was driving my mom's ginormous suv like so when you see a little, like a little, like one of the smart cars, um, not quite that little Honda fit. So okay. pretty small. Okay. And, uh, and then she has like a ginormous SUV. So I was just incredibly stressed dealing with now dealing with some pain and things like that. So all of this stress, new stress, cause that was the other thing. Like I really had simplified my life so much that I did not, I truly didn't have a lot of stress. And once that started coming back, you know, I found myself going to the store, forgetting what I was at the store for, coming home without mm -hmm. the things I wanted. Just a lot of the ADHD issues started to, I say reappear, but you know, it, so that was the first, that was the first sort of set of circumstances. And then my business started picking up mm -hmm. and I just knew that, you know, I really am taking my business to the next level, introducing some new services in my business. And in order to do that, I had to get my systems in place. I had to do, you know, I, I had to get my ADHD under control because it really was holding me back. So that was the main reason. So more of those, uh, those symptoms. So it's the kind of like whack-a-mole. You were working really hard yes. to manage it. And the harder you work to manage it, the more the, the symptoms sort of like popped up. And Yes. Yep. It is an, a yeah. really interesting thing how like sometimes the the it's definitely correlated with stress, but even just sometimes the more we like are trying to manage those symptoms, but we're doing it in a place of almost like fear because we're like we mm -hmm. can't screw it up, so we have to like you know manage this thing. Like it, it in a sense often can make it worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know when you ask about start like starting my business, one of the things I did was look back over my career because and I did what I call a career autopsy. I okay. looked back and the first. 15 years of my career, I was really successful. I was moving up through the corporate ladder. I was, you know, I'm like, what was the difference in those first 15 years versus the last few years when, you know, it really started to affect me. And the difference was I was my own boss. I was a store manager. I, w I worked for startup companies who let me create my own processes. Mm -hmm. They basically said, you know, here's A, get to Z. I don't care how you get there. Yeah. And I did it and I did it well. And people were happy with me. Then my last two jobs, it was here's A, here's Z, 
dot I's cross T's and show me that you've done it. Hey. And, and I didn't do well under those. So, so I knew that, that I needed terrifying. to, it was, it was, it was awful. <laughs> it was awful. And so, yeah, I, um, so I knew that I needed to either go back into a place where I could be more autonomous or create a place where I could be. So when we were first talking, you said that you, that you knew you needed to invest uh, sort of in, in the group and that you were, um, uh, you know, as we're in now week 10 of, of the group, you were talking about sort of looking at that return on investment. Um, yes. well, what did you mean by that? Well, first of all, I understand that how much coaching is an investment in yourself and it is something that will pay off. Sometimes you can actually see it in a dollar amount. I know that I will, but um, other times it's just in, you know, being less stressed or figuring things out. Mine is sort of a, an accumulation of all of those things. So for me, um, I have wanted for two years to launch this part of my business where I go into companies and do these lunch and learns. It's something that I've done as an HR manager and I loved it, but I just could not get it off the ground. And one of the assignments that we worked on, um, can I say what it is? Mm -hmm. The virtual admin mm -hmm. um, assignment, I was able to look at what I needed to do to launch this. And literally this Friday, I will be putting together a focus group. And then I have um, my official launch date is um, August 1st. That's so awesome. after two years of having this roll around in my head and telling people that I'm going to do it, like it's really happening. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Are you, super are you so excited. Yeah. I'm so excited that like, I like, I can't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's another issue, though. <laughs> okay, well, what do you think it is that uh, that happened in the group that has allowed been sort of that catalyst for you to to actually get this off the ground? Where you actually had this launch date? Oh, there's so many things. Um, one of them is just being able to manage my time better, to like sit down and actually do something. Um, you know, time blocking that never made sense to me before. Now I know how to do it, and it and it works for me. Um, and I think every one of the assignments you know, it was, they all sort of were building blocks. It's hard to pinpoint one. I can say that, you know, again, the, the virtual admin one was like, just so eye opening for me. And I, I shared in our group that um, as, as a little kid, when I had to do homework, I pretended to be the teacher and I would talk out loud and all that kind of stuff. And now that makes sense to me why I need to engage a different part of my brain. And I don't know. It's just that that worked. So awesome. it was a lot of that and a lot of like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like I know that this focus group that I do on Friday, it, it may not, it may or may not go exactly as planned. And no matter what, it's going to be okay. Even if it's a ginormous flop, it will be okay. Like that will still be a learning experience. So I think just allowing, looking at everything as an experiment has been hugely freeing for me. That's awesome. Now, one of the things that um, uh, we've, I've done in, in a couple of the past groups is um, usually around week seven or eight, I've had people write a letter to their ADHD. And uh, and during your coaching group, I decided to sort of do a variation of that. Um, I wanted to, I, so I had you guys do that, I think it was in the beginning of week two, um, as we're you know exploring sort of the acceptance and awareness piece. Um, and then I asked you guys to do it again in, I think it was week eight. Mm -hmm. Um, so what I would like to do is, uh, um, if you are open to, to sharing that, to read your first letter, uh, to your ADHD, and then we'll, we'll take a break and have you come back and read the second letter. Okay. Sounds okay. good. All right. So the first one was, uh, May 5th. And it says, Dear ADHD, you've been with me my whole life, yet I feel like I barely know you. I don't really like you. In fact, most of the time, you make me angry, and I feel extremely inadequate when I compare to myself to others who you haven't invaded. No one really seems to understand you that well. So in some ways, I feel sorry for you. Maybe if people understood you and accepted you, they wouldn't be so critical of you. I'm trying to understand you better. I'm trying to be understanding to you as well. I don't want to be as critical to you as I have been in the past. In the past, I've hated you, cursed you, and really just wanted you to go away. I know you can't help it. And I know if you could, you wouldn't make my life so difficult. I hear you cry at night and tell me that you didn't mean to make me do the things I did or forget the things I've forgotten. 
I know you are sorry, and I'm sorry too. I'm sorry I have been so hard on you. I'll write again soon. Cat, P.S. Let's be pals, not enemies. Mm. I did it without crying. I almost got me crying there. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a quick break. When, uh, when we come back, I'm going to have you read your next letter, um, which is uh, in the eighth week that you wrote this uh, in, in the coaching group. Uh, so we will be right back. Turn good intention into amazing actions with the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group. This virtual video-based group coaching program meets three times a week. Improve your productivity, develop better habits, experience the true power of supportive accountability from members of our own tribe. Learn, grow, and connect. Learn more at ADHDrewired.com. I hope to see you there at ADHDrewired.com and prepare to get your ADHD rewired. You know, two of my favorite content creators are Jessica McCabe of How To ADHD on YouTube and Drew Ackerman, also known as Scooter from the Sleep With Me podcast. You know, Jessica is doing amazing things for the ADHD community and my three-part series that I did with her on her show has helped many of you discover this podcast. And Scooter puts me to sleep almost every night with his soothing, rambling, tangential stories. And I value each of these creators dearly, which is why I'm proud to support them on Patreon. If you value ADHD Rewired, it would mean the world to me if you showed your support by becoming a patron. Consider giving a gift of just $5 a month and you'll get access to some really cool perks. You can check it out at patreon.com slash ADHD Rewired. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash ADHD Rewired. Thanks. Do you have a question about productivity or ADHD that you'd like me to answer? Do you have a topic you want to talk to me about? Join us every second Tuesday of the month at 12.30 p.m. Central Time for an hour of live Q&A. To register, go to erictibbers.com slash events. You can ask me questions live on video or enter it in the Q&A box during the event or submit your questions ahead of time. Your questions may be heard on an upcoming episode. To confirm dates and times and to register, go to erictibbers.com slash events. See you there. All right, we are back with Kat Hoyer. And uh, um, in, in, during the break, she was uh, telling me the, that um, that whole letter that, that um, why, why don't you go ahead and say it? Okay. So we were given the assignment ahead of time, but we weren't in trouble if we didn't do it ahead of time. So it was, we were given time in class to do it as well. And, and really not a whole lot of time. And I did mine right then and there. And I, you know, reading it back, we did read it to each other and reading it back. I cried through the whole thing. I just, I started out writing that letter very angry and then realized that I, I needed to show my ADHD compassion. Mm. And it really, there was, I don't know if you heard it, but there was definitely a shift even as I was writing that mm-hmm. first letter. Yeah. yeah. Letter number two. Letter number two. So letter number two is dated for 619. And it says, Dear ADHD, well, the last time I wrote you, I told you I'd been living with you my entire life, but barely knew you. I feel like I know you better. You're still a pain in my ass, but hopefully we can coexist. I know now that I need to talk to you more, out loud even. I know now that I need to engage parts of my brain that help you help me. I get that now. I still don't think you're a gift, but I no longer think you're a curse either. Because of you, I've met some really awesome people who help me understand you and help me feel more compassion and acceptance of myself. When I see you and other people, I don't hate you. You just are. It's helped me not hate you in myself and just accept that you just are. I know you aren't going anywhere. And I know that because of you, I have to push through some things that are really freaking hard. But I also know that after I do that, I have a sense of satisfaction and pride that I've overcome the obstacles you've put in my way. 
They say that lessons are learned through the hard stuff. Well, because of you, there's a lot of hard stuff. So there are a lot of lessons. So I can thank you for that. I'm glad we can coexist, Kat. Mm. Gives me goosebumps. Gave me goosebumps. <laughs> Talk a bit about this. Um, you, before we hit record, we were sort of talking about this idea of you've heard in the group, how, you know, when you, you heard probably the, the promotion for the, for the group about how this is a group where there's not judgment. Um, and, and you shared something with me about how, like, you, you didn't really understand what that meant until you were in the group. Right. So I think, you know, the not having judgment, I don't know there to me, it was more, I knew that people weren't going to be judging me because they experienced those things as well. But I think the biggest surprise to me was how that helped me not judge myself. When I saw these people that are incredibly successful people, you know, amazing people that I would want to be friends with outside of group and will continue to be friends with them outside of group. If I have it my way that, well, I chase them to the the ends of the earth to be friends with them, please. But um, no, they, um, it really, I was surprised at how that helped me not judge myself. Um, It was just. And how did that help you? Oh, I, it helped me with the negative self-talk that can happen a lot of times, you know, like my office is in the basement. I run upstairs to get something and I come back down and realize that I grabbed the wrong thing, you know, or grabs, you know, something shiny. I brought down with me and I'm like, like an ADHD (laughs) meme. (laughs) So, you know that, but, but instead of being like, Oh, you idiot, I can laugh about Mm -hmm. it. The other thing that really helped, um, and this is, again, was very early on, was to start to look at things with curiosity. So I found myself looking at other people with curiosity. um, And, you know, I'll I'll say my, you know, watching my parents and how they, um, I think neither one of them have been diagnosed. I think my dad is hyperactive. I think my mom is inattentive. So I think I came by it honestly. And you know, the last few times I've been around them, I've just watched what they do and how they've managed it and how they complement each other, really. So looking at them with that curiosity and not judgment helped me look at myself with curiosity and not judgment mm. and kind of all the way around. There is a uh, things last week you said something in group that I really, uh, really liked. Um, it was it was about being around people who are who are like you. Um, mm-hmm. Do you want to? Sure. So I, I've heard a lot on the promos, people talking about being around like-minded people and even outside of, um, you know, anything you hear people talk about being around like-minded people. And I've been around like-minded people. I'm a very spiritual person. Um, so being around people or even, you know, other entrepreneurs, things like that. So it's, it's, that's fairly common for me. What was really different was, I feel like this was like brained people, their brains were like mine. So it isn't even really that we were all that like-minded. We were like brained and, you know, all those me too moments um, that help you like not feel so alone in things that you feel like you're the only one dealing with it. It's just, you know, even people that are different from me feeling, you know, just, I don't know, just, it was very impactful. I I, I love that. They like brained. It's um, you're you're good with words. When when are you writing that book? (laughs) Oh, I don't know. <laughs> after after I get on the meds, <laughs> so there's a sequence of things you got to do. And... Right. <laughs> All right. So, what do you want people to know about the 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 group, and, and really share from your experience? So the first thing um, I would I would maybe have wanted to know going into it is that. Um, it's intense. It's, it's not a joke. Um, I don't know that I realized just, um, emotionally sort of what I would go through on this. And, and I, you know, I will say I poured myself a hundred percent into it too. I was not going to mm-hmm. halfway this, um, you know, I really wanted to invest myself and, and be, um, be vulnerable, be, you know, open, be all those things so that I could, I could get the return on my investment. Um, so I think that, to, you know, to know that that is something to expect. Um, I think to really look at it as an investment in yourself is something, I mean, I, I guess I know that from coaching, you know, and I understand that when somebody coaches with me, there is a, a return on the, their investment. So I think that that's 
something important to kind of look at. But I, I also think the friendships and the the level of camaraderie, I don't know if that's the right word, but, you know, um, I, I know I shared with you, Eric, there was another member in the group that was really experiencing something really difficult, wasn't in my class section, but um, we still, you know, we met on Zoom and talked for a couple of hours and, and helped each other through um, some really tough times. And I don't know, it's, uh, it's, it's intense. That's probably the best word for it. Yeah, it's definitely um, uh, not a, a casual, uh, you mm -hmm. know, could you get stuff out of the group if you kind of come in a casual way? Mm, you will. But it's um, I, I would, you know, just I would hope uh, for someone coming, uh, thinking about joining the group that you, you try to come in going all in and knowing like this is um, this is an intense program. It's it's really designed to to really give you that opportunity to really rewire mm -hmm. some of those processes in your brain. You know, to, it's it's you know it's not just a once a week thing. You know, it's it's sort of funny because when you work with if you work with a coach or a therapist and they and they give you homework and it's it's something that you work with them once a week. You know, if you have ADHD, it's like when do you do that homework? If you do it <laughs> right before you go right in, right before that next session, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and you know, and that was one of the the I remember like when I was designing this program thinking about basically I was the avatar that I was trying to create it for. And that was one of the things that I was actually, I remember being, I was in therapy at the time when I started it. And I remember thinking that I was doing the homework in the parking lot. Like I got, like I, I gave myself some extra time to, to get there so I can have time to do the homework there. And it's like, you know, this would have been a really good assignment to kind of do throughout the week. So that was, part of the the thinking about it is to to have it so frequent for for that um 10 week period of time mm -hmm. did you go through so um usually in the group around week i think it was around week five or or it's it's a very typical part of the process of the group where we're really now getting into the uh we're now planning our, our year our quarter our you know the and you know, it's usually like a week that people are feeling really overwhelmed by the process. Right. And mm -hmm. I and I, you know, prep people for this is probably going to happen, you know. And and so for as, as the as coach who's done this, you know, many of times now, I see the process. So like I'm I, you know, I, I hope that I give that confidence of it's going to be OK. Like this is overwhelming. Like this is a, this is something new. Like we're mm -hmm. pushing you like this is this is what growth feels like. Did you go through that where you're, you're, you're feeling kind of like, Oh my God, this is like, he, he wants me to plan my year and what I'm planning for this week needs to be connected to stuff I'm doing this year. Like yeah. what? Yeah. I, I went through that. Um, I actually, when we were given time in group to start to work on it. I had everything spread out on my desk and I'm trying to write it, trying to think about what I wanted to do. And it was so hard for me that I, I had a flashback to being in accounting class where I couldn't understand the debits and credits. And I was like, I, I would say, you know, I'm reading, I'm reading these words and I consider myself a fairly intelligent person, but I would read these words and they just, it was almost like my brain scrambled them on the way there or something. And I'm, I would just, tears would just run down my face while I was doing my homework. And I felt myself right back to that spot when I was trying to plan. And instead of bolting, like I normally would just, you know, throwing my hands up and saying, forget it, I can't do it. One of the things that you share with us or that you've said is we can do hard things. And I just heard that sort of like the, I think I can, I think I can, we could yeah. do hard things. We could do hard things we could do. And I just sort of pushed myself through it. But I also was again, non-judgmental where I was like, no wonder I've, retreated from doing this. This is so hard for me that it's uncomfortable. It was genuinely uncomfortable. But then there was when the shift happened where it was like, whoa, I can sort of like plan this. And I think last week was the first week that I planned ever in my life. And I'll say I turned 45. Um, so in 45 years, I've never planned a week. And last week I planned my first week. And I didn't even care that I didn't stick to it a hundred percent. I was so excited and I did it in a way. That's the other thing. Each assignment, you definitely give us freedom to make it work for us. So here's the outline of it. If that works for you perfectly, then do that. If it doesn't make it your own, make it work. And I think that is 
again, looking at things as, as an experiment, but planning that week for the first time last week and knowing that I'm moving forward to reach my bucket list items is just, it's crazy. It's so cool. <laughs> it's just so cool. What was your thought and what you're currently thinking about uh, the fact that you actually have a mechanism now in place where bucket list items are actually part of the plan? It's almost unbelievable. It really is. I mean, it's just feels like part of it. It makes me do. It makes me feel jealous toward the people who can do that, that type of thing. But then I realize we're not the only ones who have bucket list items that we never get to. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, just exciting. And it kind of feels like, so I'll share with you, we did, we did our mindfulness yesterday. Mm -hmm. And um, when you had us climbing the hill, I don't know if I'm saying too much, but you had us climbing okay. the hill. My, um, mine was once I got to the top of the hill, I was like, standing in the superhero stance with a cape on because yeah. I sort of feel like I can do anything now. Oh, like awesome. I really can. I can like, I can break it out. I know how to do it now. You know, I do think that I still need continued accountability. That's one mm -hmm. thing as a, as an entrepreneur, when you're the only one, there's no one to answer to. So I need to tell somebody else what I'm doing and the accountability partners are you know, I, I'm sure everybody was, were, everyone's were great, but mine were the best. <laughs> I love my accountability partners. Just amazing. So, um, how, how do you work with your accountability partners? Like what, um, uh, what's the, of the structure that you guys use? We decided initially to, um, just let each other know what we were going to do the next day. Mm -hmm. Um, so we would come on in the evening and, say, this is what the next day looks like, and then sort of say how we did on it. We loosely followed that structure. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we wouldn't come on for a couple of days and nobody held anything against you. And then it was also used to talk through some things. You know, I, I we all went through some challenging things during this time outside of group. Um, and we helped each other through that and helped each other see, just kind of move through it. So I know one of the the big things for me that was so eye-opening. I would come on every once in a while if I, I felt like I hadn't gotten any, anything done and I would share with them. I'd write out, this is everything I did today. And I'm like, wow, I really did do a lot. Why don't I feel a sense of accomplishment? This was before the bucket list um, assignment. And um, my accountability partner shared that, you know, is it that you didn't work on anything meaningful? That it was a lot of just little whatever caught my attention that day. And I'm like, that makes so much sense. That's why I don't feel a sense of accomplishment because I chased my tail all day long. I did a whole lot, but none of it moved me toward any goals. So I think that's, you know, just seeing it from through someone else's eyes. And, you know, it's just amazing. You said that you uh, previously were working, um, uh, maybe still are working with a one-on-one -on -one coach. Um, and they, this coach is trying to teach you, um, sort of block scheduling and you just like, kind of just didn't get it when this coach is trying to uh, teach this to you, but you're doing it now. Right. So it, it, it's not a one-on-one, -on -one, it's a group session. Okay. It's a, okay. it's like a group type thing. And I think maybe if it was one-on-one, -on -one, we could have dug into it a little bit differently, but one of the assignments just help me see how I could implement this block scheduling. And, you know, I, I try not to look too much at why, like, like why it didn't work for the other one. Just, I, I'm a firm believer of when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. I and I think I was just I ready for it right then and there. And it hit me at the right time. And I was like, this is what block scheduling means. And this is how it works. Like, I don't know why it didn't make sense before, but it just when I would hear you need to block schedule, I'm like, I don't even know how, like I don't, which seems crazy to me now that I didn't know how, but I didn't, I had, I had well, to no me, that, clue that how sounds to like, I, I remember, you know, being, you know, in middle school, even in high school where there was like, you need to use your, your assignment notebook. And I remember like the thought in my head that I never would say out loud at that point was like, I don't understand how to use it. Like, right. do I write it in the date it was assigned? Do I write it when it's still like, I, I truly didn't understand. I was embarrassed to like admit right. that to anybody. Right. right? So it's the, so whenever I hear, you know, a, a well-intended or meaning parent or teacher, just write it down, put it in your, like, <laughs> you can't assume that it makes sense because it, right. it often doesn't. So what, how do you, how do you do block scheduling now? 
Um, I do the the three by thirty. So I and I actually also pick. I do I do a combination of a lot of different things. But I explain what I, that is too. What the combination of the, things the, the are three by thirty. Oh, three by thirty. So that's where you take three things that you want to work on and you mm-hmm. work on them for thirty minutes. That just seems genius <laughs> to me. Like that's block scheduling. But, like when, um, I, when I posted that, you you ran with that, and you really oh. like. I remember like you and you. You haven't stopped since. No, no, that's it's awesome. great. And and I've always had like a top three, but I don't always do them. Well, now I put my top three in my three by thirty. Sometimes, and the other thing is the um the uh and en- the engineered urgency. What is that? The- yeah, engineering urgency. Yep. Right. So that like that has helped me a lot. Where I'll like, okay, I've got to get my three things done before I do this. You know, whatever this thing is, and like go to this appointment. So you know that has helped me. But I I will take the three um, my top three and put those in my three by thirty. But oh, you know, once I get my three by thirty done, I might do another three by thirty. So that's been helpful. Study halls. Um, the fact that we have access to study halls has been huge. And yeah, that's something Sometimes new that we're, we're doing uh, in this session. I'm definitely going to continue to do it. We're uh, basically I've, I've purchased a second uh, Zoom license and it's a, a shared uh, uh, room that anyone can use for study halls. And mm-hmm. I would say probably every day there's study halls going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And s- sometimes I go in there with my imaginary friend and <laughs> hold each other accountable. <laughs> she doesn't have a whole lot to work on. She's kind of perfect. funny though. Cause, cause I, I done that where I'll post uh, a, a, a zoom link. Uh, cause I got some important stuff that I got to do. Right. And even if nobody comes that, that like knowing that somebody might come and I really hope they catch me being like busy and doing what I want to be doing. Mm-hmm. It keeps me really focused. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's it. I try to do it on my own Zoom and it does. It's not the same. It just isn't. Yeah. Now you're just and like I, looking at yourself and like right. distracted by like, oh, what is this thing? There? <laughs> right. And, and then I, I realized I left it on like for the entire day. I came back the next morning and I was like, oh, my Zoom session is still up. <laughs> <laughs> and I like left myself a note like I'm going to go upstairs and do this and this. And then when I come back, I'm going to finish this. And I never came back. <laughs> well, you see. That sounds like another strategy that you're using there is leaving yourself that that trail of crumbs. Yes, that has been really helpful too. And I've literally been in the middle of a conversation with somebody and I'll talk to them. I'll be saying, okay, I need to do this and this, like something for them. And I'll say, how am I going to remember that? Because that's one of the things that you say to us all the time. And and literally there was one thing I said, how am I going to remember that? And I came down to write it down. I'm like, in the time it takes me to write it down, I can actually send her what I'm talking about sending her. So I, I did and I didn't even have to write it down, but. Yeah, there's just so many different things. It's hard to it's hard to pinpoint, um, you know, one or two that have been helpful because they they have. And can I share my puzzle analogy? Please. So the I kind of feel like the class is like a puzzle that we've been given and we're given like some time to find the outside edges and we're putting those all together. And right now, I think we're probably putting like the trees together and the clouds together. Like we're not snapping them together yet. We're just putting the like colors together. I don't know if anybody, you know, if you're a puzzle person, you understand this. So, you know, when we leave here, that's sort of our breadcrumbs where we can go back and we can be like, okay, I've got, I've got these edges. Now I can fill in the pieces. And it just makes sense to me. I like that. I like that. When you first say, can you share the puzzle analogy? I'm like, sure. I didn't have I don't know what that is. Yeah, I had no (laughs) idea. I'm like, sure. It sounds great. Um, I, I, on my notes here, I have a um, boxed, I wrote a mowing the dirt. Where does that come in? That comes in. That was where I kind of realized that I could change my thinking. Um, So I was, it was after I'd gone through the divorce and my front lawn doesn't um, come in very well. And uh, because I have three really big trees and it's kind of a small lawn. Although this weekend we cut down one of the trees. So that was fun. But um, so I would go out each week and I would mow my dirt. I'd mow the lawn and there was just like dirt flying everywhere. And I would be crying and swearing at my ex and just upset about life in general. You know, this isn't fair. You know, and I, I realized after a few times of doing that, I'm like, I'm going to have to come out and do this every week. And I say every week. I really don't think I did it that often. But but for the sake of the story, um, every week. And I'm like, I, I've got to figure out how to start thinking about this differently. 
So I was like, well, I guess, and I didn't know about the whole, I mean, I guess I kind of knew about gratitude. I knew that Oprah kept a gratitude journal, you know, I knew that kind of stuff, but I'm like, okay, so I'm grateful that my legs work. I'm grateful that I have the strength to do this. I'm grateful that I have a lawn to mow. I'm grateful that I have a lawn mower to mow it. So I just started kind of practicing that gratitude. Mm -hmm. And I realized, you know, how it started to shift how I was feeling. And then that's when I really got into, you know, like Wayne Dyer, change your thoughts, change your life. And just how that whole CBT model of how that really can change everything. If you can reframe your thinking. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, it's the, uh, so, so often the, um, you know, the, 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 what's in our way the most is that our own story that we're telling ourselves about mm-hmm. the situation, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and it's uh, and that, go ahead. I was gonna say that was part of why I didn't want to move forward with this project that I, that I'm doing, that I'm going to be launching, you know, doing the focus group on Friday and then um, then launching the rest of it was because part of my story, I was embarrassed. You know, the, these are the people that I knew that I'm going to try to be selling my services to, you know, I went through a rough, a rough patch but I'm no longer like nobody can use your story against you if you accept it. That's right. That's right. And, and I accepted it. It was, it was a definitely, you know, a, a hard time for me, but I, a, I pulled through it and B it helps me understand people mm-hmm. that are going through those types of things. So yeah, we can, we can change, we can change the story just by changing the wording. Okay. So who do you think should uh, really consider joining our, our next group? I would say people that are ready to invest the time and the energy um, in into this. Anyone who really is ready to kind of take their life to the next level and know they know that the way their ADHD is being managed is holding them back. I would say anyone who's like, I'm too smart to not be further along than I am. That's really, um, yeah. And what about those people that, which is probably like most people uh, that I talk to say, well, I'm afraid that I'm not going to stick with it. Um, I think that's a valid concern, but I think the way the class is set up, it helps you. Um, it does help you stick with it. Um, I think you do have to make that commitment to yourself though, that, you know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to show up and not just show up physically, but really show up for it. Mm-hmm. So I think it is set up because it is designed by somebody who understands how our brains work. You know, it it isn't if you if you don't do A and B, you can't get to C, but it definitely is if you do A and B, C will be easier. So I think, yeah, if they're afraid they're not going to stick with it, then they're in good company because I think we all have that fear. And as far as I know, we all stuck with it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah good, good. Uh, sort of turn out again. Um, it's, uh, I do wonder if, um, you know, like who, like types of people who could be certain, I think most of the people in, in the groups like are at almost all, I forget which, uh, which group I asked, uh, yesterday, but I think it was like 10 of the 12 people had been to all, but like two sessions, like, mm-hmm. which was pretty out- awesome. Right. I've, I, I missed one and I missed it because I was at a, an industry event, but uh, you know, and they're recorded sessions. So you can go back and look at them when somebody's not there. That's the other thing I noticed that, you know, people will say, I'm not going to be here and, and here's why. And no, there's, um, I, I thought there would be a little more, I hate to use this word cause I hate this word, but a little more flakiness and there isn't, I mean, I feel like people are really committed and you know, it helps that we hold each other accountable and we also don't hold it against each other. I think, you know, one of the things with ADHD is that we tend to get really, if we don't do something, we get really embarrassed and ashamed. Mm -hmm. There is no shame in this. You know, we're we're sort of like just owning whatever it is. Like, you know, if somebody forgot, they'd say, I forgot, you know, and people be like, well, totally get it. No big deal. But nobody, nobody's forgotten that I know of. (laughs) (laughs) That that we at least remember. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) right, right, right. (laughs) Anything else that you want to, uh, that you want to share? No, I shared all the things that I, that I wrote down. So I I just, I am so glad that I did this. Um, it, I would say it was a hard decision, but it wasn't, I just knew, I knew that the time was right in a year. I want you to ask me how I'm doing like financially, because 
it will be a huge difference from where I am now. I, I, I guarantee it. Well, what we can do is we can uh, schedule another uh, call in a year from today and see how you're doing. Your mom's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. <laughs> and, I, and I'm writing that down because we're going to make that happen. So if you're uh, if you're like new to the podcast, but you're listening to the backlog of this and maybe you can go forward and say, did Eric do it? Maybe I did. Maybe I did. We'll see. No, uh, I just wrote my sticky note. <laughs> schedule Monday. No, it says schedule mom. Oh, schedule mom. Okay. <laughs> Which is not what I meant to write down. <laughs> I cannot write and talk at the same time. I had, I have my little sticky note. And the other day I was trying to put it into my file and I'm like, what does schedule ADHD mean? I have no idea what it, what it was. I was like, I can't schedule that. I don't know what that means. So the breadcrumbs have to be big enough That's that right. you know what they are. That's right. Um, oh man. Um, all right. Uh, schedule one year from today in the schedule. Okay. So I'm going to put that. I'm going to attach that to the call mom uh, sticky note. <laughs> so what we're going to do, um, we're going to wrap this conversation up, but we are going to continue the conversation uh, on Patreon. Kat is going to uh, share a letter that, uh, that she wrote to... Am I my ex? To my ex. To your ex husband. Um, I got a sneak preview of it. It's it's kind of intense. <laughs> um, so if you uh, want to hear what that is all about, or even if you don't, but you still want to support this podcast, um, come over to Patreon at uh, patreon.com slash ADHD rewired. Um, one of the things that I am doing as soon as we are uh, done recording uh, and this video renders, I'm going to put that up on Patreon on uh, Patreon. So this will be available. Um, so anytime I finish recording an episode, it's on Patreon and it's often weeks before it actually is uh, released in your podcast feed. Um, and that you get that at the $5 a month level. Um, so um, I think that's all we got. So uh, thank you, Kat, so much for, for sharing uh, your story and your experiences of being in the, in the coaching group. And uh, um, you're in the ADHD Rewired community, right? Yes. Okay. So I am, uh, I'm sure if anyone has any questions, they could also reach out to you and, yes. uh, you know, you can send your private message. Okay. So what's it, what's it really like? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'll tell you, I will be a hundred percent honest. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And congratulations. You do, you really have, uh, you've been a, a pleasure to have in the group. It's, it's as a, as, as a, a coach, a facilitator for, for these groups, um, having someone who really, who really invests themselves in, in the group fully um and it's watching the growth happen is uh it's a, it's a very rewarding um experience for for me so congratulations on all of your your growth thank you thank you it's just the beginning awesome <laughs> all right well um i think we should cue in the banjos but before we do that how can people reach you um i'm cat hoyer on all platforms or i'm cat at composecoaching.com all right and we will uh, link that uh, all that stuff in the show notes which it will be uh erictivers.com slash whatever episode number this ends up being um <laughs> and at some point soon it'll all be adhdrewired.com slash that's going to be really soon because it, we have a new website that is really close to launching it's actually ready but we're waiting for the launch of the coaching group to be done and then we're going to make that go live um so all that fun stuff is coming up and Kat, thank you again. Thank you. Really appreciate thank it. you. This is Eric Tivers. Thank you for listening and congratulations for making it to the end. ADHD Rewired is a more than just a podcast. We are a community focused on learning, growing and connection. The website is ADHDrewired.com. You can find summaries and additional resources for each episode. Learn more about the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group and sign up for my email newsletter to get exclusive content that you won't get anywhere else. It's all at ADHDrewired.com. 
Support ADHD Rewired and help replenish our coaching group scholarship fund by becoming a monthly patron at patreon.com slash ADHD Rewired. Different levels of support get different perks. You can give just a buck or three or five bucks a month or more. Every little bit helps. And it's an awesome way for you to let me know that you value this show the community, and everything else we do. That's patreon.com slash ADHD Rewired. You can follow me on Twitter at Eric Tivers. Subscribe to ADHD Rewired on YouTube to see select interviews and other videos I've made. The ADHD Rewired community is now a secret group on Facebook, so that's one less reason to not just be a passive listener, but to be an active member of our community. Fill out our short screening form at our website, ADHDrewired.com. We screen everyone before they join. Podcasts change lives. You can make a difference in someone's life by spreading the word about this podcast. Mention it in your online communities or on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, Quora, or wherever you hang out online. And be sure to share it with your friends, your family, your clients, as well as your coaches, therapists, and doctors. If you're a member of Chad or any other ADHD support group, be sure to tell them about this podcast. You can even show them how to download it on their phone or even do it for them. And if you really love this episode, please hit share on your podcast player. I'm only one person and I count on you to help me spread the message. One of the biggest things you really can do to support this podcast and to help other people discover it is to leave an honest rating and review on the Apple podcast app or on Stitcher or any other podcast app that supports and accepts ratings and reviews. Looking for more ways to listen and learn? Get a free audiobook and a 30-day free trial at Audible by going to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired. Need some ideas on where to start other than Brene Brown's Gifts of Imperfection, Daring Greatly, Rising Strong, or her six-hour recorded workshop, The Power of Vulnerability? Then I would recommend The One Thing by Gary Keeler. Oh, and if you by any chance know Brene Brown, please let her know how grateful I am for all of her work and what she means to me and the ADHD community, and that she's welcome on my show anytime. And in the one in like 7 billion chance that Brene, you're listening, please come and be a guest. Thanks. This is Eric Tivers reminding you, keep learning, keep growing, and keep connecting. And no matter how hard it all feels... Remember, we can do hard things. Until next time.